Hi, welcome to my first Patreon project, Blending Colored Pencils with a Heat Gun. In this project, I will show you step by step how to make an apple using this technique. Hope you like it. For this project, I'm using Prismacolor colored pencils. And I advise you to keep all your pencils very sharp and nice. And I also using this colorless blender pencil, which I bought on Amazon. I can leave the link for you to check. And I'm using also rubber and a crafty knife that is not showing here in the video, but it's useful as well. I started by drawing the apple with the indigo blue colored pencil. Then using the same pencil, I started to shade it with very light pressure and using shape following strokes. It's very important you keep your colored pencils nicely and very sharp for any draw you use to adventure with colored pencils. As I approached the light area, I made the layer less dense and I used the same pencil for the cast shadow with the same point and pressure. Now then I've applied a layer of Tuscan red over the indigo blue using the same sharp point and lighter pressure. It's important to keep light pressure when you are layering colors with colored pencils. Now, using the colored pencil Spanish Orange, I applied a layer at the center bottle of the apple and in the area adjacent to the shadows. It is very important to keep your colored pencils with a good and nice sharp tip. Your drawing process will progress more smoothly, efficiently, and therefore you will enjoy it lots more. Artists sharpen the colored pencils in a number of ways. It can be with a handheld pencil sharpeners, which is my case, I prefer or it can be with an electric pencil sharpener, or a cosmetic sharpener, or sandpaper blocks, and even the old fashioned way, which is a knife or one side blade. What works for one artist may not work for another artist. It's often a matter of trying out different sharpeners and sharpening methods and then you see what works best for you. But a sharp tip is really important, as I said before, in the drawing process, because it helps the pigment of your pencil to penetrate your paper tooth. So you can lay down layers of colors and create a wonderful, vibrant effect without clogging the paper surface too quickly. For colored pencils, there are a few techniques you can use and I'll make another video project to demonstrate it very soon. You can use each of these techniques alone or in various combinations to create some really interesting effects. For our Apple project here, we can just use the back and forward techniques or we can use also the circular movements where you think it is more adequate for you. I would advise you to hold your colored pencil more over the middle of it to give your hand a control of the movements while applying the light pressure we need now. You will not see that I'm not using the black color pencil uh, for this project because I think if you mix the indigo blue or 
even another blue with uh, Tuscan red or orange, it gives you a very nice dark shade where we need it in the darkest part uh, without look like too saturated black. So I'm not using black. We're going with indigo blue on top over the areas where we need the most dark at the end. Now, using the yellowed orange colored pencil, I'm going in the light side of the apple, again with light pressure and a sharp point, always following the contour of the apple. I make sure I didn't contaminate the light areas on the left side because they are where we have the highlights. I'm using now the Tuscan Red to make the shadow around the stem darker and pop up a little bit. And um, just to remind you to keep it at the light pressure. I made the shadow around the stem darker using Tuscan Red. I want to add a little bit of Tuscan Red where we have the darkest values as well. So I keep adding the Tuscan Red where I think we need more the dark, darkest values. And I'm trying to apply it in very short circles movements, but following the shape of the apple. So we can get a very interesting results at the end. Um, I'm not a, I don't consider myself a realistic artist. I don't drew in a realistic way. I, I admire very much who does it. I think it's very beautiful realistic draws made with colored pencils or watercolors, but it's not my style. I like to have things very blended. It's how I think is interesting, making the drawing more impressive but definitely I'm not a realistic style artist. And excuse me, my accent. Um, English is not my first language. Uh, my first language is Portuguese from Brazil. Uh, Brazil is my hometown. I was born in Brazil in, in the 1970s. And I immigrated to England 10 years ago when I met my husband and since then I live here in England so I couldn't change my accent yet and I hate it. I'm going to use the colored pencil in cream color at the top by the stem area and right in the bottom of that area by the stem I'm using a little bit of sand color. Then now I'm going to apply a little bit of olive green over the sand pencil.
So I'll add here in the edges as well, the olive green, because it's a very nice color and it gives a natural look when applied over uh, the first layers of color. I add a little bit here in the middle as well to give that appearance of skin. And just a little bit of olive green in the area of the body, of the apple where we have a shadow, just to give it a natural look. So I keep it with the olive green around overall, um, just a light, very light pressure and very little to give a natural look. Um, I was very nervous to make this video. It's the first time I make a video like that and I'm not sure if he, I did it right in my English it's not the best perfect English but I I prove it so much without has been in English school in my life and um, well I'm quite nervous I hope I can pass for who watch for you that I, you are watching my video I hope you can understand what I mean and what I want you to get from this little tutorial. Now I'm going to use a um, layer of green stone red over the Tuscan red. I'm using in those areas here to bright up the Tuscan red. I would appreciate very much if you can leave your comments at the end um, what you think of my video uh, because if you leave your comments I, I will try to improve my next lessons my next videos and make it better for you for you understand and also please show me your work show me your apples let me see i feel so happy to see you achieve uh, nice results with my videos while drawing this apple came in my mind that i ate my first apple only when i was two years old because i lived in the northeast of brazil and there was not apple in my town and then we moved it to the southeast when I was two years old. And in the way, uh, my father stopped to put petrol and someone offered my mom an apple for me. She was afraid to give it to me to eat, but anyway. I'm going to apply now popping red over the yellowed orange and Spanish orange area, preserving the highlights and using a little more pressure but still with a very sharp point pencil. Here I applied more Tuscan red over the green sun red. And as I got closer to the yellowed area, I switched it to green sun red. I'm adding a little detail here on the top uh, where there are that little lines, red lines inside the apple, just to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'm using a little bit of burnt dark umber and, and the pop red, pop red. I'm going to use a little bit more of green sun red in the darkest values areas and also a little bit of pop red. Over the orange areas, I applied one more layer of pop red.
and I get the green sun red just to make a blend in between the light and the shadow here. Back with poppy red to make it a nice blend. And I will keep adding a layer of poppy red around the darkest values and the light values. Try to blend in the darkest areas and the lightest. Keep adding these layers of popping red and alternating with the green sun red until you see it more. Uh, vibrant and burnished. That's how the apple look when it's burnished. I also used a layer of Tuscan red on the cast shadow using light pressure as I moved away from the apple. I'm using now indigo blue followed by dark amber to paint the dark side of the stem and cream followed by olive green on the light side. I also went over the light area next to the stem with more cream, sand and a little olive green and darkened the shadows even further with a Tuscan red. And I'm going to use the olive green and cream again just to alternate and give it a good blend in the area where I applied the two colors. Using the dark amber now I'm going to add a little bit of shadows to the very top of the apple using a very light pressure. using the sand color to blend it to the center of the apple in a very light pressure. Because there is space here, I um, think need a little bit of blending, so I'm using the colorless pencil blender. Here we start the fun part using the heat gun. So I'm starting using it far away from the apple and in circular movements because you cannot stand with the heat gun in the one place. 
otherwise it can burn the surface and your draw so I keep doing it for a while and I see the surface is kind of like shiny I don't have a point I don't know how to say where you have to stop you have to watch and see when it gets shiny and then you feel like you have to stop and rework the area using the pencils again because the area is going to be hot it's going to be easy to blend the colors now i'm going to apply a little bit of clay rosy on the cast shadow followed by french gray 50 percent and french gray 20 percent further away from the apple because the surface it's hot it's still um, it's very nice and soft to apply the colors and they nice and easy blend it together you can apply more layers heat and blend if you wish as long as you wait until the surface is cool and be careful to not completely saturate the tooth of the paper if that happens and the paper won't accept any more pigments, you can spray a couple of light coats of workable fixative and that will allow you to continue layering without problem. If you decide that the apple needed to be a bit darker on the darkest side, you can go over in there with indigo blue and a little bit more of green stone red hit with the heat gun and then blend with Tuscan red hit again and blend with the colorless blender pencil Now I'm going to use the heat gun again to warm the whole apple. I then quickly start to blend the colors. Uh, first I'm starting by the cast shadow and using the clay rosé with the colorless pencil around the area to give it a nice blend. So using the colorless pencil, I'm going over all the edge of the apple to blend while the surface is still hot. I'm going to use it now a craft knife just to lift it up a little bit of color on the top here because I think we should have a little bit of light in this side so let's use the craft knife and lift it up a little bit of the color and I'm going to apply another color to blend it on later now 
I'm going to use the yellow orange to add some highlights on it. And when you use the heat gun, um, the colors get softer, so that's now you can how you can blend it easier. But while you are applying color over the hot surface, you can come with like a um, little bit dust. So you use a soft brush to clean it. Don't rub your fingers in the surface. Otherwise you can cause like a smudge in areas and damage your work. The pigments blend a lot faster and a lot easier when the surface is hot than when it's cold. Besides, it does make it easier for burnishing the colors without making blisters on your fingers. Here we are at the end of our project. Our apple is done. I really hope you enjoyed making this project with me. It's my first project on Patreon. Thank you so much for your support. And if you would like to see more tutorials like this in other medium, leave a comment or message me. I'd love to know your opinion too.